Let's just have a quick look at Okay, quick look at a classical game. See how we get on here. So I think the idea for today is just to look at any potential lessons learned from the previous games. I think I had one loss today and one, one win. But really it's looking at developing a better understanding of the what went wrong syndrome. <laughs> and it's trying to iron out the what went wrong before it actually occurs. Doesn't look like the opponent's starting on this one. Okay, fine. I scared them off. All right. So have a quick look at a see if there's any classicals on here. There's a classical one going on at the minute. One that's just starting high level. Let's have a quick look at this one. Looks like he's wanting to castle this side. Nope, okay, so he's developed the knights, attacking the pawn. He's leaving this pawn here, could have taken. It's a bit fancy. It's a bit fancy for me. Let's see if I can get back into the game again. <clears throat> right, let's go again. bit scared doing these um, live games, especially longer games, and get the specials out, super duper skills, because I think it flashes up like you're streaming or something, I'm, I'm no professional streamer, so please people just come and be nice. I tend to find people don't really like playing long games, especially in the evening. They want to play these quick, sharp, bullet, blitzy type things. But you get a better understanding of the game of chess playing the longer games. And you see the big massive gaping holes in your knowledge, your skills, because every game is different. Looks like we might not get a game for this session. I might have to go over some of the games that we have played. Ah, oh, here we've got something. Oh, question mark. Damn. Oh, question mark all over the place. So we don't know this the level of this person. I could be playing some sort of master. Okay, I'm going to bring this through here. Grab this pawn here. So I'm looking at the bad moments and trying to clear out the errors before I actually make the errors. So if we come here and attack the queen, you can't really see a problem with it. It could attack our king, uh, king, but we can defend with our queen. So that keeps that simple at the moment. So he's gone backwards. Could attack, but he can simply drop his pawn, so it might be a waste of a move. Or we could look to just blast through the center to stop this from pushing even further, even though the knight would take, but it opens up the dark square bishop as well. So I think I'm going to go with that. 
and I need to stop talking too fast because then my movements become fast as well and this is a long play game. So it looks like they've gone on the defensive and they've blocked their knight from actually coming to this area here, uh, which might be a good thing for us. So I'm looking to develop the bishop, where do I develop it? Ordinarily I'd bring it here because we don't want this annoying bishop coming here, he could do that at some stage. But I think, and then if I go here, another question, if I go here, I'm blocking the protection of this pawn, the knight's the one that's protecting. Hmm. Could just play it safe and go here, couldn't I? Just play it safe and bring it here. Can't see any problems with that. So there's a lot of pawn moves going on. So I'm hoping that because he's doing all these pawn moves and he's not developing his pieces at the moment, that that's going to cause him a problem later on. But from my experience, I've found also that just because they haven't developed their pieces doesn't mean that they're either rubbish or they don't know what they're doing because they then eventually start developing behind the pawns. But it's for us to try and take advantage of the gaps that are created with these pawn pushes. So we're going to castle kingside. So now he's got time to reframe wherever he's going to place his pieces. So that's maybe a positive because it's like a rope a So now he's coming, he's attacking the pawn here, he's getting his pieces all set up. So we can develop our bishop out. Could bring it here. I'm conscious I really want pieces around my king or protecting my king area because now he's sniffed out that I've castled kingside. He might be panicking as well, thinking, well, he's not actually castled. So that might be a benefit to us as well. Any pieces that aren't protected at the minute from theirs. This pawn is not got any protection on, but how do we get to it? Hmm. I'm actually just going to simply just bring the bishop out for now while, while we're thinking. So the whole situation is we want to try and prevent errors. So yes, he's rushing, going, castling. So now he has developed his pieces like we said. So it doesn't mean they're rubbish just because they do a few pawn pushes. Um, just means they're later in developing their pieces. And I'm not wanting to stronghold him just yet. Knight could come here looking to just blast him, but it's attacking a pawn that's protected and it's not really going anywhere. So what's the general idea of the attack that we want to do? As part of the answer process, it is putting pressure towards the king or the king area. At this moment, we don't have a direct movement. I'm still itching to go here. For what reason? There's no immediate attacks. It's just an, an, uh, an attempt to block this bishop from having this diagonal but it might, might be a wasted move there could be something better i do like this it's just that his knight is there so it will take so maybe we move this bishop here to then get this action seeing small potatoes but it seems like something to do because this bishop is taking a while to come out Maybe they're going to come out on the next move. So I'm going to do a gentle movement here to just help maybe the attack towards there. So he's gone and castled, so we could do this. Let's have a look at how that looks first. So we go here. He doesn't have to take at all in any way, shape. Bishop takes. He could leave it and he could make, make movements down towards here. Again, looking to keep the attack on this um, pawn. But I'm going to continue with that attack for now. It's small potatoes, nice gentle. It's got a protection dog. I'm not overexerting. I'm not being too aggressive, I don't think, with this particular movement. He still, still does have these two on the back. So now he's developed them out. Okay, so we could take. Then the knight replicates. And what happens after that? That's the question could take because there's no protection on the bishop because the knight has blocked the queen from defending but is it a trap so we take then the knight has to move again then we can bring the knight back again and attack his knight this way 
So I'm going to grab this bishop because it's got no protection on at the moment. But I'm mindful we could be falling into a trap. So he's moved very quick like he was expecting that because he's attacking our bishop. So I don't really want to leave my knight hanging just there doing nothing. It is attacking another piece which is the bishop so we might as well go for a double dose. Am I improving the position of their queen by doing that? Queen's going to be sat here. It's blocked off by this pawn here. It's blocked by this pawn. So it's not got an immediate attack formation afterwards. Idea is attacking the king area. So we do have this there. And then the queen putting a check on. He goes back. And there's nothing else after that. Bishop's got the diagonal here. I'm going to take the bishop off the board because our mantra is knights hunt the bishops. So we're following our process at the moment. So he's still got he's still on our bishop now and he's moving really fast. I think he's moving fast because maybe they may have made an error. I don't know. Queen has got diagonals coming to here and it's got diagonals coming to especially for this B pawn, always for the B pawn. So we can move our dark square bishop. I don't want to move it just to move it because we can safely take back. Could bring the queen up, just developing the queen. If the knight takes, then we take with the queen. I'm trying to improve my position. Really looking for this here, but is that going to work? Go there. His knight, his knight takes. Got to be careful with my arrows as well. And then takes and then we get here. Obviously, that's a very obvious thing. It's just going to block. So this is the crucial stage, isn't it, really, as to what to do. I think I'm just moving my queen up just to protect the bishop. And improve the position if the knight does take. Like I say, it doesn't have to take. So currently, we're in... A stable position there's an advantage here now how are these advantages lost it's either overthinking moving too fast or making a mouse mouse slip so I must avoid all of those so he's not taking so now he's looking to close us down he doesn't want us having that diagonal towards the king so now we change the tactic, not tactic, we, the strategy. Potentially we could come in here and attack his knight. Looking to jump here if he doesn't take. It's something, it's a movement. I don't think it's been too forceful. If the knight takes, then the pawn takes. Mm, I'm going to just develop that nice and steadily and just attack the knight. I'm very wary because he's still got some powerful pieces on the board and it all could kick off and then I lose the advantage of the extra minor piece. So just sitting waiting to see what they want to do. They may just move the knight out of the way, you know, to be arty. We bring here, then we're attacking another piece, which is the rook, a higher piece. So it's all very tricky, especially when you, you're working on some ideas based on the evaluation that I've done with my recent games. And um, especially with the Congress game that I just had this um, earlier this week, where I did a mouse, clip, mouse slip with my... Oh, and they've resigned, it looks like. Oh, okay. Well, that was over very quickly. I mean, we had even broken 40, it's only 14 minutes here. Okay. Uh, just have a quick look at the analysis. I, I think we went through it all anyway, but it's always nice to have a look, isn't it? Okay, let's uh, just go back. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so nice steady opening, then pawn pushes, queen comes down, developing itself, 
and then we're attacking the queen. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. Brings the queen back, and we just push through the center just to make sure we can open up the dark square bishop, you know, for any activity. Then another pawn push potentially could have been a development of the knight and we were undecided as to where we wanted to put the bishop ordinarily the bishop comes here you see and it's got like the annoying x-ray through to the queen and but we thought well there's no point putting it here because it's all blocked off so you you sort of biting on granite there at him and then another pawn push so that's like three pawn pushes where they haven't developed their pieces and if you count the minor pieces we've developed one two three to their three pawn pushes slightest of advantages i would say i mean gauge bar's giving us it but you know again gauge bar don't gauge bar don't always work for us so <laughs> uh, so they develop a bish the bishop focusing directly onto this pawn here and we did say well we want to start trying getting our pieces around our king protecting our king the area as best possible so we start mobilizing the bishop just slightly just making sure that we've got it ready to go in either diagonal then develop the knight so then we says oh yeah they're going uh, king side castling so they've, they've got a bit of a panic on here so now we're developing the white square bishop for potential for any attacks towards the king area then we decided it also needed to support the knight if we were going to be attacking the knight here. So they decided not to take and the gauge bar has gone absolutely crazy and that's because this bishop no longer has any protection because the knight has blocked the queen. So we decided to capture, didn't see any major traps going on there so we decided to capture and then also capture a, another piece with the same knight so that seemed to work for us okay up to that point and we wanted to get a good balance of rooks being on the back but really just supporting this bishop and also looking at if there was an oops, excuse me if there was an exchange getting the queen involved with the potential of coming here obviously that would never happen but you know it's a positive so they push the pawn down blocking off that idea altogether but that's another pawn move not another minor or major piece move which I suppose I think is kind of costing them that sort of tempo and development so we bring our knight through attacking their knight and at that point uh, the opponent resigned so interesting game it's part of the class classical hour, I suppose. Well, it's not even classical hour. I thought one game would have taken um, maybe two two hours or something like that, but obviously that hasn't happened. Well, um, that's my whole all. I will catch you on the flip. That's old school, sorry. <laughs>